In this video, we will take a look at how to calculate the worst case time complexity of the bubble sort program we have seen earlier and thereby compute the big O notation of this program. So let's start by defining what the worst case of bubble sort is. In the worst case of bubble sort, which we are in which we are trying to arrange elements in an array in ascending order, the worst case would be if we receive an array which is in descending order. In such a case, all the loops will run maximum number of times. And at every time, the if statement is going to be entered. So what is the worst case? When we receive an array in descending order, both the loops i and j will run maximum number of times. And every time the if statement condition is checked, we will have to execute the statements within the if block. So now that we have kept this in mind, let's start doing the primitive operation counting. So this is going to take one unit of time because it is just an assignment. This is going to take again only one unit of time. It's just an assignment. Now we come to the loops. We have said that the length of the array or the number of elements in the array is capital N. So first let's see that this I loop, how many times does the I loop execute? Let's say, keep an example N equal to 5. So I goes from N minus 1, so it goes from 4 all the way till I is greater than or equal to 1. So this is I equal to N minus 1 all the way till i is greater than or equal to 1. So the last value of i is going to be 1. So what are the different values of i? 4, 3, 2, 1. How many times does this loop execute? 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times. If n is 5 and the loop executes 4 times, what can we say? That this loop is going to execute n minus 1 times. So now let's go to the loop statement. Initialization will occur only once, so that is 1 plus i greater than or equal to 1. The condition is always checked one more than the number of times the loop executes. This is because for n minus 1 times, the condition will be satisfied. For an extra 1 time, it will not be satisfied and we will come out. So this is n minus 1 plus 1, which is going to give us n. Increment will occur as many times as the loop executes. So this will occur n minus 1 times. So adding this up, we get this statement running 2n times. So now we have seen the i loop. Let's look at the j loop. So let's keep the same thing as n is equal to 5. In such a case, what were our values of i? We got i as 4, 3, 2 and 1. Right, so what have we said about j? j goes from 0 until it is strictly less than i. So it goes from 0 till j is strictly less than i. So 4, j goes from 0 to i. So it's the j values will be 0, 1, 2, 3. It will not reach 4 because we have not said j is less than equal to i. We have said j is strictly less than i. 3 will be 0, 1, 2, 2 will be 0, 1, and 1 will be 0. So, how many times does this J loop execute? So, this is going to execute 4 times, this is going to execute 3 times, 2 times, and 1 time. So, it's going to execute once, then twice, and Keep going in this same fashion until it reaches n minus 1. 
So, what can we say about the number of times this loop executes? We can say that this loop executes once, then twice, then thrice, all the way till it executes n minus 1 times. So, this is how many times the j loop is going to execute. Let me put that here. So, let's start with the loop statement. The increment will occur as many times as the i loop executes. So, the increment on its own, it occurs once with one primitive operation, but it occurs n minus 1 times. Now, we have the condition. The condition will occur or will execute one more than the number of times the loop executes. So, let me say that this quantity is equal to x so that I don't need to write this whole thing every time I want to refer to it. So it's going to occur x times. So what is the number of times the condition will execute? x plus 1 times. What is the number of times the increment will execute? x times because increment executes as many times as the loop executes. Now the question may arise, why am I not multiplying x, x plus 1 with n minus 1 or the number of times the outer loop is executing? This is because when we say x is equal to once and then twice and then thrice till n minus 1, we are including all the cases of the i loop. This is not just, this is not executing just for one uh, instance of the i loop, but at some instance of the i loop we are only executing one time at another instance of the i loop we are executing two times so when we say that the loop executes x times we take into consideration all instances of the i loop so we don't have to multiply it by n minus 1 so this is equal to x plus 1 plus x now let's see the if statement The if statement has two indexes into an array and one comparison. So it's going to take three primitive operations on its own. However, this is inside the j loop and it will occur x times. So this will be 3 into x. Each of these operations include one indexing and one assignment. So each on its own takes two primitive operations. This, however, occurs x times. So this will be 2x, this will be 2x, this will be 2x. We come out of the if block, we come out of the j loop, we come out of the i loop. So, when we return the array, this is going to take one primitive operation. Now we are done with listing out each statement how many primitive operations it takes. Now all we need to do is add this up. So, adding them all up, we get t of n is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 2n plus n minus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 3x plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 1. Simplifying this we get 11x plus 3n plus 3. Now we want our time function to be entirely in terms of n. We don't want this x term. So let's see how we will simplify the x term. We know that x is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till some n minus 1. This can be considered to be in arithmetic progression. So in arithmetic progression if we have a sequence 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till k we say that the sum of this series will be k into k plus 1 divided by 2. So what can we say about x? x is equal to n minus 1 which is equal to k then n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. So x is equal to 
n n minus 1 divided by 2. So what can we get as the time? The time is equal to 11 by 2 n square minus 11 by 2 n plus 3 n plus 3. So now we have the equation for the worst case time. What we need to find from this is the big O notation. So we need to find which term will most drastically affect its growth function with respect to n. That will be 11n square because this will make the growth of the time quadratic with respect to n because this is the highest power of n. So we say that t of n, ignoring the constant in this term, we say that t of n is order of n square or in other words bubble sort is order n square. This is how you determine the big O notation of bubble sort.